In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. We're continuing with the hadith from Sahih Muslim. And just to uh, piggyback on something that we talked about yesterday, we spoke about how there's no prayer accepted without the Fatiha. So what does that mean? That means when you're making salat, the Fatiha must be recited in every position. And one of the students here had a very good question that I need to share the answer with the rest of the Muslims in the world. Oftentimes, when you're praying behind the Imam, you're reciting the Fatiha silently to yourself. And you don't get to finish it before he's saying Allahu Akbar and moving to the next position. So is your prayer accepted? The answer is yes, it is. Because even though you did not get a chance to finish the whole Fatiha, you get the reward of the Imams. The Imam is the leader of the prayer. So if you don't get a chance to complete the Fatiha without him saying Allah Akbar going into the Rukua position, don't worry about it. Allah gave you the reward of the Imam's Fatiha. Does everybody understand that? See how easy Islam is. Allah made it easy for us. He knows his creation better than we know ourselves. Some of us are, are quicker or, than others. Some of us are slower than others. So you're going to get the reward of the Imam's uh, Fatiha. And the same with the Tashahud. And that's what we're going to be speaking about today, the Tashahud. What if I don't get a chance to complete the Tashahud? Is you know you get the reward of the imam's tashahud, okay? So you know that's good things. A good question that Sister Um Ibrahim asked, and I'm glad she asked that. And today we're going to speak about the tashahud and also the saying of Amin. First of all, just as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us how to recite the Fatiha, he also taught us how to say the tashahud. The difference is the Fatiha is an obligation. There is no prayer without it. We have to pronounce the Fatiha the way the Prophet taught us. We cannot say it in English, which was another good question that came up today too during the quiz. The, ta the Fatiha is the only Arabic that you must learn. It must be said in Arabic. You cannot give the English meaning of it. Until you learn the Fatiha, you simply say Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, and, uh, uh, and Alhamdulillah in every position. Now the Tashahud is different. Okay? The Tashahud is different. Say you don't know the Tashahud, all of it in Arabic or whatnot. Again, all you have to do is say Allah Akbar, Subhanallah, Allah, Alhamdulillah, whatever, until you learn it. But can I say the meaning of it? Can I say the Fatiha in English? I mean, I mean, not the Fatiha, excuse me, the Tashahud in English. Well, again, guys, we have to understand the Sunans of the prayer, which are things that I don't have to do, and the obligations of the prayer. Now, the Prophet Muhammad, again, taught us how to pronounce the Tashahud. Until you learn the Tashahud, you say, Supana Allah, Allahu Akbar, and La ilaha illallah. And then when you learn the Tashahud, then you say it. You don't need to be sitting there reading this stuff in English, guys. Not when the Prophet taught us how to say it. And the first Tashahud is a Sunnah. The first Tashahud is a Sunnah. The second Tashahud, many of the scholars agree, is an obligation. Okay? In other words, say I'm making Salah and I forgot to recite the first Tashahud. When I was in the second Rakat, by the way, the first Tashahud is recited in the second Rakat of the prayer. The final Tashahud is recited in the last Rakat. Say you forgot to recite uh, the Tashahud in the second Rakat. Well, you know, your prayer is still accepted. They'll say that it's a Sunnah. 
But the last rakat, you should learn el the Tashahud and recite it. We have a hadith here where Ibn Masood said, while observing the prayer behind the prophet, we used to say, peace be upon Allah and peace be upon so-and-so. So one day the prophet said, Allah is peace. So don't send peace upon him. He said, instead, when you sit during the prayer, you should say, all services rendered by words, by actions of worship, and all good things are due to Allah. Peace be upon you, O prophet of Allah and Allah's mercy and blessings be upon you. In other words, send your peace and blessings upon me. He was saying, you don't have to send your peace and blessings upon Allah because Allah is peace. Allah is blessings. Allah is all of that. And then testify that there is no God but Allah and that I, Muhammad, am his servant and messenger. And then you can make any other supplication you want after that. In other words, if you want to ask Allah to make you rich, to give you children, you know, make, it, make your job go easy, whatever, do that afterwards. Okay, so again, you know, uh, and that's when he taught the companions the Tashahud. And also you learn from this hadith, after you recite the Tashahud, this is when you make your supplications. A lot of Muslims you see after they finish praying, they make dua afterwards. The prophet did not make dua after praying. He did not sit there with his hands raised making dua and a dua. He made his supplication during the prayer after the final tashahud. After the final tashahud, this is when he would say, Oh Allah, forgive me of my sins. You know, make my wife strong. Oh Allah, take care of my wives as I, if I should die. Oh Allah, you know, protect me from the evils of Shaitan, uh, the Quraysh, whatever. Whatever supplication you want to make, you make it before you give salams out of the prayer. Not after. Does everybody understand? And that's based on this hadith. The prophet said you may choose any supplication that pleases you after the tashahud. Y'all see that? So this is another uh, inconsistency you see amongst Muslims. They're making dua after the prayer when your dua should be made during the prayer after reciting the tashahud. Ibn Abbas said the prophet used to teach us the Tashahu just like he taught us the Fatiha. See, there you go. So learn the Tashahu. Learn the Tashahu in the Arabic, guys. Learn it in the Arabic until you learn it. Say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. He said the prophet used to teach us the Tashahu just as he taught us the, the Fatiha. And, you know, there's the meaning of the Tashahu. What are you saying when you give the Tashahu? This is what you're saying in, in English. And by the way, guys, uh, on my website, sunnafollowers.net, there's a link that says New to Islam. If you guys click on that link on the sunnafollowers.net uh, main page, it will take you to how to pronounce the Tashahu. There's a recording telling you how to say it, how to pronounce it correctly. Please visit the New to Islam page on SunnaFollowers.net. You will see the Fatiha, the Tashahud. We even have Ayat Korsi. We have uh, 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 the Phallic, the Nas. Simple prayers there, how to pronounce them with a recording that you can uh, recite after and everything else. Go there to learn the Tashahud. Until you learn it, just simply say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, in that verse. I mean, in that position. Okay? So that's the Tashahud. And I want you to know the first Tashahud is a Sunnah action. So that means if you're making Salat and forget to do the Tashahud in that second Rakat, don't worry about it. Your prayer is still valid. And then the prophet taught us um, in that final rakat. Then that's when we should send blessings upon our prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Um, look at the hadith here. We were sitting with one of the companions when the prophet came, 
And the companion said, O prophet of Allah, Allah has commanded for us to send blessings upon you. But how do we do that? And then uh, the prophet said, you simply say, O Allah, bless Muhammad and the members of his family as you did the members of Ibrahim's family. Give favors to Muhammad and his members as you did to Ibrahim. And, you know, again, if you go to my website, sunnafollowers.net, click on that link that says New to Islam, you will have that right there. We call it the Dua Sharif or whatever in Arabic, speak the different names of it. How to say it, subhanakala, you know, how to, you know, uh, uh, how to recite that after the, uh, after the Tashahud and all of that, okay, in Arabic. All right. Again, until you learn this stuff, you know, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah, Akbar, or whatever. And again, this is a sunnah. This is a sunnah. These blessings that are sent after the second or last tashahud is a sunnah. That means if you don't say them or if you don't do it, your prayer is still accepted. But again, the things the prophet told us to do, you should try your best to do them. That's the perfect prayer. So we do the sunnah actions because this makes the perfect prayer. And finally for today, I want to just briefly speak about saying amin after the fatiha. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the imam is leading you in prayer, and at, when he recites the Fatiha, when he recites that last verse, then you should say, Amin. And if your Amin is said at the same time that the angels say it, your past sins will be forgiven. Your past sins will be forgiven. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Anyone who utters Amin, and your Amin is at the same time if the angels say it, your previous sins will be forgiven. And again, this is a sunan as well. This is a sunnah of the prayer as well. What if I don't say Amin? Is my prayer accepted? Yes, it is. Because it's just a sunnah. But still, do it if you can. Look at the reward. So these are some of the things I wanted to just go over with you today. Again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us how to pronounce the Tashahud, just as he taught us how to pronounce the Fatiha. So we should learn them correctly. Learn them the way the Prophet taught us in the Arabic. Also, the first Tashahud is a Sunnah, which means if you forget to recite it, your prayer is still valid. Also, another sunnah that is highly recommended is to send blessings upon the prophet after reciting the last tashahud. But if for some reason you forget or don't, your prayer is still accepted. And also the saying of Amin after the Fatiha. Even though it too is a sunnah action of the prayer, it brings about great reward, which is forgiveness of your sins all your sins if it coincides with the angels and their reciting of it. And also women too can say I mean out loud softly. So if you're praying at the mosque, the imam gets to that part, uh, if you say, you, the women can say I mean too, but say it softly. You don't want to say it loud where the men can hear you. Just say it softly. You get the reward. So these are some things I wanted to go over about the Tashahud. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a quiz to cover this, uh, the, these things we were saying. Also, I want to remind everyone, this is the end of the month. We only have a week left, and then it's going to be time to pay the webinar fee. Our webinar fee is 280 what, $285? Please, guys, send in your donations to cover our webinar fee and other fees that we have here so you can continue to log in here and learn uh, Islam and its truthfulness based on the Quran and the authentic hadith and their meanings. So we'll stop right here. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadun la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.